Hi everybody, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about dwelling unit kitchen receptacle outlet requirements based on the 2020 NEC. We had a pretty big change in the 2020 version uh, of section 210.52c. Uh, it's substantial and it's somewhat controversial, so we're going to walk you through it. 210.52c, countertops and work surfaces. In kitchens, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar, Countertops or work surfaces 12 inches or wider require receptacle outlets as indicated in C1 through C3. Now, if you're not familiar with my slides, under, uh, underlined yellow text is indicating a code change. So, we need receptacle outlets. Fine. Back here where we have the cooktop is definitely a countertop. I think we can all agree with that. This island is a countertop as well. What is this thing over here on the right? Is that a kitchen countertop? You could make the argument that it's not. You could, you could make the argument that it's a desk. I mean, it looks like, uh, like this is a chair hole, a knee hole for a chair, and it's lower in elevation than the other kitchen countertops. So this might not be a kitchen countertop. If it's not, it would be a work surface. And either way, the rules are the same. So whether you want to call it a kitchen countertop or a work surface, either way is fine. Starting with the change here, receptacle outlets that are installed for kitchen countertops and work surfaces covered by C do not count for the wall space receptacles covered in A. Now this was added a couple of code cycles ago, but what they're saying is this. I've got my kitchen countertop receptacle up here, and off to the right hand side of the screen is my dining room, and of course it needs receptacles in accordance with the regular wall space rules, the 6 foot, 12 foot uh, requirement. But what this rule is saying is this receptacle for the countertop does not count as the required receptacle for the wall in the dining room. We have some new language here for multi-outlet assemblies, and really we, we needed to do this. This is a really good change. If a multi-outlet assembly is used, each 12 inches of assembly is considered one receptacle outlet if it contains at least two receptacles. Okay, this is something that I never really paid much attention to until I read this language uh, during the 2020 revision process. 210.52c, and all of 210.52 really, it doesn't require receptacles. It requires receptacle outlets, and there's a subtle difference. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six for the duplex, six receptacles but I only have one receptacle outlet because a receptacle outlet is defined in Article 100 as an outlet where you install a receptacle. And an outlet is pretty much the end of the Romex in this picture. It's the box where the wire is. So this is only one receptacle outlet, but it is six receptacles. Well, the code says you need receptacle outlets. So you could make the argument that this did not comply because you would have to have this specific box every couple of feet. And of course that's absurd, so they made a nice change here to clarify it. But this whole outlet versus receptacle outlet thing is going to rear its ugly head here in just a minute, so we're not done talking about that, believe me. We go into item one, wall space, no changes here. Receptacle outlets must be provided so that no point along the wall line is more than two feet from a receptacle measured horizontally. So but my tape into the wall, I need a receptacle within two feet, and then within four feet, and then within two feet of my range, and we start over the measurement once again. Again, that's pretty simple. That's been in the code for quite some time. And we still have the same exception that we've had for a, few, for a few code cycles now. A receptacle's not required behind a sink or a cooktop in accordance with uh, figure 210.52C1. So here I've got my corner mounted sink, if the, if the uh, space from the back of the sink to the corner is 18 inches or less, then I do not need a receptacle. So again, that's been in the code for a while and that didn't change. Uh, one little nuance though that we should talk about is how do you measure for the wall spacing receptacles? I think you have to draw an imaginary line here that follows the sink and then where that imaginary line meets the wall space line that's where your measurement would start. So I need a receptacle within two feet. I need a receptacle outlet within two feet of that little corner right there. And I think that probably gets missed a lot. Let's talk about the real reason we're here though. Islands and peninsulas, huge changes in the 2020 NEC. 
In previous versions of the code, 2017 and prior, how many receptacle outlets did you need for this island? And the answer is one. You only needed one. We have one receptacle outlet with two receptacles, so we're in business. That would comply. But it's not that easy anymore in the 2020 NEC. Let's keep going. Receptacle outlets are required as indicated in 210.52 C2A and C2B. So C2A, for the first nine square feet or fraction thereof of the countertop or work surface, at least one receptacle outlet must be installed. Okay, so we're doing it based off of the size of the island now. Here I've got a six foot by three and a half foot island. That would be 21 square feet. So we know so far that I need at least one receptacle outlet for this island for the first nine square feet. What about the remaining, the, the remaining, the remainder of the area of that island? That's what we're gonna talk about next. So we're gonna find out the total area, install one receptacle outlet for the first nine square feet, and an additional receptacle outlet for every additional 18 square feet or fraction thereof. Okay, so here I've got a 12 foot by eight foot kitchen island. That's 96 square feet, 12 times eight. We know I need one receptacle for the first nine square feet, so I'm going to take my 96 minus nine, and that leaves me with 87 remaining, <laughs> remaining square feet. 87 divided by 18 is 4.8. So I need five receptacles for the additional square footage plus one for the first nine square feet. <clears throat> so in this photograph, I actually need six receptacle outlets. How many did I need in the 2017 code? One. In the 2020 code, I need six receptacle outlets. Now, where are we going to put them? We'll talk about that in just a minute. But looking at this recept at this photograph, I think most people agree that one receptacle outlet is probably not enough for this. But I also think that most people would agree that six is probably way, way overkill for the required number of receptacles. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Now, this is nice and easy. Whether you agree with the math or not, it, the math is simple. 12 foot by 8 foot, 96 square feet, that's easy. But of course, not all countertops look like that. So we're going to have to figure out how to solve for countertops like this. And that's going to require us to, you know, do a little bit of math skills. So we're probably going to have to draw some imaginary lines, turn it into a rectangle, and then turn it into a couple of right triangles and do, uh, what is it, half the base times the height of the triangles. Uh, it's going to be kind of tricky. But even on one like this, I think we can all agree, once we do the math, what's required. I have no idea what to do with this. Uh, and I mean that. Looking at this photograph, I don't have a clue how many receptacles this thing's supposed to require. Uh, I wouldn't know how to calculate all the curves. That's beyond my mathematical abilities. I'm sure you can. I just don't know how to. But let's talk about the, the elephant in the corner of the room. What about this massive cooktop? Do I have to include that in the square footage? The code doesn't say. It probably should. And in the 2023, I'm going to submit a proposal to, to make it address it. But I think that it, it seems logical to me that you would not include this in the square footage. Or you could even say, well, Ryan, the, the code requires receptacle outlets based on square footage of countertop and work surface. That's not a work surface. We can agree with that. I mean, well, unless you call uh, unless you call cooking work, I guess you could call it a work surface. Uh, I don't know. This is a tough one. I don't think I would count that in my measurement as an inspector. But if you're doing the installation, you might want to and just save yourself the potential callback. So how many receptacles do you need for this? I have no idea. If you're an electrician, I would tell you put five of them in there and, and then you'll probably pass inspection. C2B talks about islands and peninsulas. For peninsulas, at least one receptacle outlet is required within two feet of the outer end. So this receptacle here is now required. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the end like this. It could be within two feet of the end, but certainly this is the most, uh, the, the easiest and most common way to satisfy the rule. How many receptacle outlets do I need for this peninsula? I'd have to do the math. I'd have to do one for the first nine square feet plus one for every additional 18 square feet or fraction thereof. So I, looking at this, I would say this probably requires three receptacle outlets, just, just taking a, a glance at it. If more than one receptacle outlet is required due to the size of the island or peninsula, 
then those receptacle outlets can be located anywhere, but they have to comply with 210.52C3, and that's what we'll talk about here in just a minute. So here we've got a 30 square foot island that requires three uh, receptacles, one for the first uh, nine square feet, that leaves me with 21, divide that by 18, and that's gonna be like, what, 1.1? but it doesn't say a major fraction, it just says any fraction thereof. So I would need three receptacles for this island, but they can be anywhere. So I could have all three of them at one end and that would comply. I could have two here and one here. I, I could do it however I want. In fact, if you want to get creative, hang some pendant cords down and dangle them above the island. Those count as well. But here's the problem. What's a receptacle outlet? you can ask code experts and get different uh, different answers. What I mean by that is if I have a single gang box for a duplex receptacle, that's one receptacle outlet. I think pretty much everybody agrees on that. Two receptacles, one receptacle outlet. So I could take, if this one needs three receptacles, three receptacle outlets, I could take three single gang boxes with three single receptacles and that would comply. But could I take a three gang box with three duplex receptacles? Now that's six receptacles, but potentially only one receptacle outlet, depending on who you ask. So I think there is definitely, uh, something needs to change in the 2023 because I can, I can view this as being problematic. As is always the case, you'll want to talk to your inspector in your area and say, look, what do you think? You know, it seems kind of dumb to me that I could pass with three single receptacles, but fail with a total of six with three duplexes. That doesn't make any sense. I, I think we would all agree. All right, let's wrap it up. How do I measure for the uh, peninsula? The measurement is taken from the connecting wall. So it, it is uh, taken back here. It is not taken at the connecting edge. In 2014 and prior versions, it started at the connecting edge. It now begins at the connecting wall, and that means more receptacles, right? You're gonna have to have more receptacle outlet because that results in more square footage. Item three talks about the locations. Receptacle outlets must be in one of the following locations. They can be up to 20 inches above the countertop or work surface. So I've got them up above. That complies as long as it's not more than 20 inches above. So that's one option. They can be in the countertop. Receptacle outlet assembly is listed for use in countertops or work surfaces, may be installed in the countertop or work surface. Be careful though, it's not just that it has to be listed, it has to be listed for countertops or listed for work surfaces. My understanding is that that's two different product standards as well. The ones that are listed for countertop have to, uh, have to comply with like a, a water test where the, you know, a spillage kind of test. And then option three, receptacles may be installed up to 12 inches below the countertop or work surface provided the countertop does not extend more than six inches beyond its support base. So here we have this receptacle that's beneath the countertop, but as you can see, the uh, countertop extends out more than six inches. So this is not a violation. Me as an inspector, I couldn't make you remove that receptacle. It just doesn't count as a required receptacle. One of the things that's a, a subtle change is this was only an option in the 2017 if you were doing a house for somebody with a physical disability. Like if you're in a wheelchair, you're limited to how high you can reach. So if it was for the physically impaired, then you could put the receptacle down here. Or you could put the receptacle down here if the countertop was totally flat. No backsplash. If you have a backsplash in 2017 or previous versions, it has to be up above the countertop. That criteria is gone in 2020. You can always put it underneath the countertop as long as you meet the 12 inch vertical dimension and six inch horizontal dimension for the countertop or, uh, or work surface. And then the last thing, receptacles not readily accessible due to sinks, appliance garages, or appliances that are fixed or that occupy assigned space do not count as required outlets. Here I have an appliance garage. I may or may not have a receptacle in there. It doesn't matter. You can put them in there, that's fine. You don't get any extra credit for doing it. It does not count as a required receptacle. So 
it looks like I have a violation in this picture. I should have a receptacle back here between the uh, ovens and the appliance garage. All right, everybody, that's the 2020 change to 210.52C. And uh, boy, it's got everybody in the industry talking because it is a major, major change. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.